What's up, everybody? Welcome to Wits End Podcast. I am your host, Devin Witt, alongside my co-host, Joe The Show. On the phone again, for all the haters out there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it, it seems to be a problem with the internet. How dare you? Because mm. As if they aren't on their phone 24-7, whether they're on a date, hanging out with their family. Heaven forbid you're in a podcast. And you're looking up something on your phone. Well, I have life outside of this. I have older kids. They're like, hey, Dad, I'm just, I'm doing, you know, they keep in touch. So mm, they still uh. live with me. So it's good for the kids to say, hey, I'm not dead on the side of the road. I'm, you know, I'm okay. I'm at Walmart or wherever else. It's called good phone etiquette. It's called good parenting. And, and that sounds and like controlling <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> that sounds like most kids uh, over the age of 18 and 2024. Still at home, living with their parents. Well, mine are in college. I know, but either way, it's still wild. <laughs> yeah, well, it is It is a thing. So, But at least you kept your kids, because that's True. actually today's topic. Um, you know, I, the only way I know how to say this is I have, like, uh, my, my top three reasons for why women should stop getting abortions. And mm. now, clearly, I'm very much qualified because I've had three children. <laughs> you say that because myself. Oh my god! I know. Um, yeah, I know. We have to say that because like, that's the. Pro- you're not qualified because you're not a doctor. You're not qualified because you're not a woman. But hey, we could look at the internet and say, "What is a woman?" <laughs> you know, I mean, that's the that's the hype <laughs> right know. now. Like, yeah, we can't define that. So I'm more than qualified because if we need to be a woman in this one, then I'll be that for this episode. I'm I'm qualified because I'm the father. And I'm sorry, there isn't a single woman on the face of this earth that can get pregnant without a man. Uh, so I'm definitely very much. What world are you living in? in the we can be puppies. We can be kitties. We can be f- people. We can be furries. We can be whatever we yeah. want. I, How dare you, in 2024, I, say we can't? Because we can be whatever we want. I did forget that in 2024, women are technically having sex with dogs. If you count let's talk how they let's identify. Let's talk about abortion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, let me just go ahead and, and, and get right to it and start with a amazing quote uh, from none other than the vice president of abortion access at the one and only Planned Parenthood. And I can stop you right there and tell you it's going to be crap. Look at the VP we got right now. Well, oh, look, we're talking about the president of the United States. Well, her, her name is Tram, is not Tran. Probably confused, just like our VP was right now. Am I Indian? <laughs> oh, no, not I'm not today. She, I'm going to be black. She has absolute clarity on the evil <clears throat> that she's partaking in. Sure. And she does it with a smile on her face and laughing about it. Because that is the world that we live in, is that you can actively kill babies uh, inside the mother's womb. And people will laugh about it uh, as they actively try to sell that baby's body parts. And that's where I'm going with this. <laughs> So we have none other than Tram, uh, I'm just going to say Guyen, N-G-U-Y-E-N, uh, is her last name. Mm. And this is a direct quote from illegally obtained footage from uh, the CMP who posed as a biotech company uh, to gain access to be able to talk to these people with their guard down. And here's what she had to say. And this is, I quote, I'm like, oh shit, if other people were to hear me, they'd be like, you're fucking evil. In regards to telling buyers, she has a leg for sale. And this ain't just any leg, people. This is a unborn child's leg. Let me go ahead and finish what you're saying. No, that's the exact quote. quote. So let me, I got to wrap my head around. I mean, I do understand what you're saying because there is this information out there of these. But like. This is so disgusting. I don't even, even want to ask the question I'm going to because I, it does pique my curiosity. Like, you, you're chopping up baby. We know this happens. Like, you, people can run from this all they want. This is a reality. What do they, they, they sell them to who? Like, what? To biotech companies for to, research and vaccines. Okay. Because, I, I mean, I, I know. I guess I'm because of the stupid redneck, I guess. I guess people, that's what they would say. I'm thinking, like, who, who are they going to donate these body parts to? You know, like, you're not going to, oh, there's another baby that needs a new leg. I mean, it just doesn't work like that. You know, well, like, it's not an organ donor. Well, the, 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 the real issue becomes is are they selling it for profit or not? And, and to me, well, that's everything. not the real issue at all. The, the main issue here is the fact that you are capitalizing off the lost soul of a human being and selling it to other individuals rather than giving them a proper burial in the same way you would a newborn child who just came out of the womb. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So what what's the difference between one that's inside of a woman and one that, that comes out and immediately dies? There isn't a difference. Um, and so the, the real issue here is the fact that these people are allowed, whether they make a profit or not, doesn't matter in my opinion. Mm. The fact that you are actively engaging in selling these body parts after you kill them is terribly wrong, and it's very much well, immoral. I don't care if you say it's in the name of research. That does not matter. You're killing children. Right. Well, th- you know, I, I know people will, will not necessarily agree to disagree on this. The thing of it is we've we've let society... I have to go back to Christianity, you know, in, in these situations. And it always goes back to that because this is what this country was built on, this Christianity. And somewhere along the way, over years and years and years, just didn't happen overnight, we find ourselves in this predicament because the Christians, true Christians, maybe did. Maybe there's not enough true Christians. That's maybe the reason why. But people under the umbrella name of Christianity that would say they're a Bible believing, God fearing, I believe in Jesus Christian hasn't stood up for this stuff, and that's and that's why this is still prevalent happening. And we have had some some overturns with Roe Ro v. Wade um, and stuff like that. You know, I'm not going to get, I don't have to get very deep into this. You know, my stance is crystal clear. You know, I do not agree with this um, under any circumstance because there's too many things. Well, rape and incest. I'm not even, I'm not even going to really even want to entertain that conversation. You now, have if that's to. something in there, well, you do have to entertain it. But the thing of it is when you look at these things, statistically, that is so minuscule on the scale that realistically what I'm saying is, although it's an issue, we're not addressing that. And the reason we're not addressing it is because out of we'll say I have a hundred percent, and statistically it's so low that that's really not in the decision making process. That's just an excuse for something. It, it's not a valid argument because it's so minuscule, you know. Um, so, and I'm not trying to take away from the from those situations that do happen, um, but it, it's just so irrelevant to it. You know, the bottom line of it is you're still killing you know an innocent baby, and pe- well, it's not. It's it's my body, my choice. You know, like, where did we come up with this? Like, I understand... Satan? Yeah, I mean, for sure. You know, I mean, it, it's very... I think that these things, if you look at abortion in itself, it's very satanic to begin with. Well, you, uh, yeah, you're going to get your panties in a wad about that, right? But if you look back at, you know, babies in general and children, this is like, this is like, like not a new thing. Well, it, you it, know, like they've modernized it because yeah. uh, back then it was, you had to wait until the baby came out yeah. to sacrifice the child. Now you no longer have to do that. You can get it, you know, a yeah. month in, eight months in, nine right. months in, or you can just wait until the baby comes out and then well, let the mom have a, sure. a moment to cry about it before yeah. you end in, that baby's in the hel- life. In the in the in the excuses, the health of the mother. Well, you know, the thing of it is, I and and it's arguable, and and maybe. The thing of it is, there's situations that, and this has happened. It's it, these things are proven. It's happened. The doctor comes in, your baby's going to be brain dead. Your baby's going to have this illness, and the mother decides, you know, she's put with this situation, like I'm just having an abortion, and you know, it never happened, or you know, I'll go ahead and have the baby. And and there's good women out there that will. I'm having the baby. I'm, you know, this is what Bible says. This is what I believe. Um, is their body their choice? And so <laughs> they had that. They made that choice to have that baby, and the doctor was wrong. And, and and it happens. These things happen. So so they can't. To me, they it's not a valid enough excuse. Say, well, the doctor said so. Well, I can tell you right now that most doctors, not all, because they're they're all not like this. But if you pay enough money, they'll tell you and put on whatever paper you want. That's why, even though I believe that these abortion laws that they've, well, certain criteria has to be met before you can legally have an abortion. Do you think that I'm stupid enough that there's not doctors enough out there that you're going to pay them? Hey, if you give, slip me the extra grand on this piece of paper, it will say that you are going to have you know problems of some sorts of reason. We had that, yes, it's going to happen. It, we, we see it. You don't think doctors are exempt from this? Look at politics, people. It happens every day in politics. That's why the, we are in these situations to a level, because they're being bought off. Well, and by the way, there are doctors out there, and they're very sick individuals, but they actively enjoy committing abortions. Uh, they, uh, it's it's and, just and that, messed up. That is the world we live in. The, the real issue here, though, is the fact that 
this is 100% satanic. And so, like, you know, to kind of recap a little bit, my, my first point here is that we have a conflict of interest, which is, on one hand, the public is told, it's your body, it's your choice. You know, th- this is up to the woman. This is a very private thing between her and her health care provider. But yet, on the back end of this, there is very much a financial incentive. Mm-hmm. Now, whether we can blame Planned Parenthood for that financial incentive or a biotech company that uses it for research, et cetera, or in the use of vaccine manufacturing, the, the point of it being is that there's money involved. And the moment you start to involve money, I'm really questioning the legitimacy of the main argument, which is uh, this should be the, the woman's right to choose. Well, it, it shouldn't be the completely... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Now, that, now that, that's point one. That leads into point two, which is, well, then what is this whole my body, my choice movement? What's it truly about? And I would say it's satanic at its core. And the mm-hmm. reason why I say that is because look at the words of Jesus Christ. Um, you know, I give my life for you so that you can live, mm-hmm. but yet you have these organizations and institutions telling you no, no, no. It's your life, and you need to sacrifice your life yeah. for me. Yeah, that's satanic, people. And, and not, make and, no mistake about it. And even another way to look at that too is, you, you know, in simple terms, those doctors are playing God. That person that's making that decision is playing God, because that's that's where Christianity to me. I'll say it for what it is. You know, I know. Go ahead, put it in the comments. You shouldn't judge. Too bad. I'm going to, because what it is is if you were sitting there saying, "I'm going to do this." You are pre- play, playing God, and you're going to say, "Well, I'm a Christian, and I I have good Christian values." Okay, then let God be the decision maker. If that baby is going to be born handicapped or mentally ill or or whatever, let God be the determining factor in that, not you. You know, so these women are playing God. I don't believe that it's, it's my body, my choice. That 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 exaggeration and lie only goes so far, and I say that because of this because. A, a, a good young man, a, a man, you know, a young man, but a person having a baby, they have a baby, and the woman says, I'm going to abort this baby, and you don't have a choice, and it's my body, my choice. Well, you know what you're doing? You're psychologically screwing that guy over, so he does and should have a choice in it. And, hey, you don't want it? Well, guess what? You didn't do that by yourself, so he should have a choice. And and that guy, now his consequences, he's not going to have to give birth, but mentally... Um, it's it's a psychological issue to some level, some people. So where does the guy's choice come into the play in this? It's, see, that's the thing. Women's rights are great, but it's, it's some degree, they're too much. Yeah, you can call it sexist, call it what you want. I don't even care. I'm not going to even entertain that conversation with anybody. They have given too much power to people in general. And I, and I say women, you know, unfortunately in this situation, that's who we're talking about. You're giving them way too much power. And, and men that stand behind it, you're just, you're ignorant. Everyone, every one of y'all stand behind this, you're ignorant. You know, I don't care what situation you're trying to paint to me and, and try to justify it. It's not right. It, and here's how screwed up it is. I, I told you this example, but I will say in here, you know, and, and other people's probably coined this. I'm sure I'm not the only one that's thought of it is it's okay for having abortion. It's legal. Okay. You go out and you're drunk driving and you hit, hit a woman that has a baby and you kill her. It's a double homicide. How come that life is not valuable inside the womb because she wants to have an abortion? It's not valid. It doesn't matter. It's not murder. It's not a homicide. It's nothing. But yet you kill that, but you kill that baby. All of a sudden it's a homicide. That that does seem to be a double standard. It's very much a double standard. And, and, and But that, that easily falls back into it, it's a very illogical argument whenever you say my body, my choice. Uh, it's the most selfish thing that you could ever say in your mm-hmm. entire life. Yeah, which um, is no surprise why they're just being selfish and killing babies. I mean, it's now, now to to kind of get back into it, you know, because you said uh, these doctors think they're they're like gods with life in their hands. Uh, who gave them that thought? And I would say, mm-hmm. let's go back to the very beginning of the Bible, where Satan himself says you can be gods by just eating from this apple, you know, uh, and getting this knowledge that that's yeah. going to set you free. And and look how well that turned out for us. Yeah, and but the thing, <laughs> see, the thing of it uh, is, is who so who, at the end who of the, day, the first it's no one? Surprise. Who is the first one? It, it was definitely a woman. Yeah, uh, exactly. Now, to me, that honestly doesn't matter. Oh, it does too, because look at society. 
what the what Adam do? He's stupid. He followed it. Yeah, he, and he look at where we're it. at. <laughs> he stuck with it. You know, lady. stuck with her or whatever. He's he like, like he's take like another rib. Oh yeah, I was told not to, but I'm doing it anyway because he was ignorant. And I'm not saying anybody in the face works being any different. It's not what I'm like. I'm so much better. But I'm saying like we're just following the lead. What I'm what I'm referencing here. Well, I guess what I, my punchline is I'm getting to is men are stupid. They just keep going along with this. All right. If what if Adam had actually straight up he didn't take a bite of the apple and he told god hold up she did that not me take another one of my ribs let's try this thing over again imagine how That's much different concept. life would be if satan had just gotten eve and then they made a what's another good a karen <laughs> I don't know. I'm kidding. I don't know. Uh, I've never thought like that. Like, no, woman, uh, you messed up. You're dude, on your own, dude. What if he had actually said, "Nah, I'm good." Yeah. And well, but there's some truth to that. With you it. know, like if if guys would just say, "No, nah, you know, this goes against what I believe um, biblically." Jesus told um, me not to. More unethically, yeah. And they just stood that ground, like, yeah, where where would we, you know even even back then, but where would be at in society right now if men just said, "Hey, no, 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 no." This is not well, what God says. This is not what the Bible says. I'm not going to do that. That's that's crazy talk. Now, now I would, uh, I'd, I'd like to I'll just go ahead and give a, a personal story because I, I've dealt with uh, almost abortion personally. <clears throat> uh, I remember being, it, it was literally the day after my 18th birthday and finding out that my high school girlfriend was pregnant. Uh, and me at the time being completely overwhelmed, you know, I'm about to go to a major university in about six months and live my best life. And here I am finding out that my entire life, uh, could be changed if we choose to have this child. And, uh, unfortunately my, my ex comes from, uh, a family history of abortions. So not only her grandma got an abortion, uh, her mother also got an abortion, and her sister did as well. Right. And then also her cousin. And these women decided to gang up on my ex-girlfriend. And It wasn't a gang up. It was an intervention. Uh, no, it, it's called a gang up. Yeah. You know, because in, Paint when the picture typically what it is. In, in an intervention, it's to help the person. Uh, mm. But that, that wasn't very helpful because at the end of the day, um, you're pitting that woman's ultimate, what she knows is right in her heart against what you're telling her sounds nice. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Were they right about some things? Yes, we didn't work out. We th That relationship ended within two right. years. Uh, now we could get into why it ended. <laughs> oh, that's not hard. I, uh, let's not. Let's get into uh, it. I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I'm sure you did play a role in it. Well, let's be uh, fair to that situation because, you know, this may get her not. Well, and I let, have me, no let, me, let me finish the story real quick. So they have uh, this gang up session on her in which – they did pretty well convince her to go through with an abortion, but I'll, I'll never forget sitting down with you and mom and uh, basically you saying like, all right, if this is what you're going to do, so be it, but here's everything you really need to consider in the situation. And by the end of this maybe 30-minute conversation, in the bottom of my heart, I knew that's the wrong choice. Mm -hmm. And so I had to make the sacrifice of instead of going to college and partying and having the time in my life, I was going to sacrifice, uh, bust my tail, get an education, you know, work as much as I could to be able to provide uh, and make ends meet instead of the easy way out. And, and to me, that's what abortions have become is it, it's not about oh, my God, if this woman has this child, it's going to kill her because of X, mm, Y, Z medical implications. It, it's a crime of convenience. Mm -hmm. It's, oh, I laid down on my back for this boy. He's not a man because he's not willing to stay there and, and raise this child. So I, in my opinion, that, that automatically disqualifies you from being a man. And, and next to that, it's your fault. <coughs> Look, at the end of the day, women that take birth control uh, and that just sleep around with anyone and everyone because they, it, it makes them feel good or feel better about themselves because most of the time they have daddy issues, um, I'm sorry, you should be forced to have that child. And the reason why I say that is because you made the choice to lie on your mm -hmm. back and let this guy bang yeah. you. So 
It's your problem now. That's for you yeah. to deal with, not for me as a taxpayer to have to fund the killing of a child that I say no to. Right. And that's the real issue is the fact that this Planned Parenthood organization, 97% of the time, it's only for abortions. They, they quit doing, they don't do mammograms. They aren't actually checking up on women's health. All they're doing is killing kids 97% of the time. That's over half of their services. I'm telling you, people. Well, is it like this is like no, th- it's like no news to the people that's listening to this. I mean, people know what the abortions are and they know what these facilities are about. It's not like they're there handing out freaking candy. You know, they're they're there for one purpose. They're not they're not offering all these other services. Like people know that. You know, it, it's just a viewpoint of you know saying like when's enough's enough. Now wh- you know, I mean, like we could do an hour episode or we could do ten minute episode. The thing of it is, it, it's it's politic. You know, politically, it's right. You know, morally and ethically, it's wrong. Much like a lot of other things in our society, you know, we could even compare it to. But and I, I did actually want to get into the politics of it because, the, in my opinion, that's how we got to this point. Is because on both sides of the aisle, at some point, they made the decision of, "Ooh, this is messy. This is really tough. It's tough you know. to make a hard stance about saving children's lives." And and that's the real issue here. And look, I'm not saying that every single abortion that's ever took place was entirely motivated by evil intentions because like i just stated there are women out there who if they have that abort or if they don't have the abortion mother will die we have the best evidence in star wars whenever anakin skywalker and obi-wan kenobi are about to fight and anakin's wife what is a padme is giving birth to mm-hmm. twins and dies in the process. And Anakin knew it was going to happen. He was having visions, and it happened anyways. Even though they live in the future, their medical technology just wasn't quite capable <laughs> of figuring out, hey, this is going to kill that lady. Uh, and robots could not save her life, which is beyond me, whatever. The The point of it being, though, is like, I'm not saying that's not a legitimate reason to have an abortion. I'm not saying it whenever a 11-year-old girl, like if my daughter at 11 years old was gang raped and ended up getting pregnant, uh, I'm sorry, but at the end of the day, yes, I would okay my daughter to have an abortion. And and number one reason why is because it could very much pose a, a bodily risk uh, to her, but also because that, that's a very one-off scenario, and it, it's it's more of the exception to the rule, not the the main part of it. But and that's, that's what kind of I was the saying. Th- but that's what I was saying with these other issues. You know, there, there's, I, I'm not going to justify it in any case because, you know, good, the dog getting crazy over there. Good can come from those things. Um, it's hard to see because it, again, and I don't God. disagree. And the thing of it is, is the thing of it is, a a dad let's kill the baby. Let's kill the baby. Well, that's your opinion on how you would deal with that situation. Um, I, I can't say, um, exactly what I would do on air, probably get booted, but there would probably be people getting killed, but I can assure you it wouldn't be a baby. Well, and I, I can assure you that that so would for sure take place. So like, I'm not running you know, like from that those, those, those things, like, I understand, like, that statement and everything behind it, but the thing of it is that it, it's, I'm not saying it's not, it doesn't happen, um, but these things are so, like, so low on the scale of what we're talking about. And I I want people to understand, I am not discrediting those bad situations for people. I am not discrediting discrediting that in the least bit. Like I said about rape and and incest and like the situation, I'm not downplaying that. But this is not the majority of what we're talking about. The majority of what we're talking about is just like you said, and I'll put it in more blunt terms. You can't keep your legs closed. And the guy's just as guilty either way. You can't keep your legs closed and you get pregnant. So this is your excuse is just to kill the baby for a problem that you have. No, that's I, I, that's what this is. Look, at the end of the day, yeah, guys play a role in it, obviously, because that's the only way you can create a child. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, make no mistake about it, this is on the woman. And this is why you have books like the Bible to kind of tell you how to set up a, a good relationship yeah. so you don't have to worry about having a abortion of convenience because that's exactly what it is, is, oh, I don't want to grow up. I don't want to have to change my life. I, I have a career I want to focus on. I, I want to go travel the world, this and that. I, I don't, I don't want to raise a child. Yeah. Then quit having sex. Well, and the thing of it is, and that, that's the there's point. people out there, that the, the, the alternative is, is there's people out there that would take kids in. Well, you and know, I, like, I'm glad you brought thing, that up. You know, like there's people out there that would openly take a baby in, 
in, in that situation. It's just you, what you don't want to go through the nine months, the eight months of pain. You know, I mean, really, what it comes down to, because it inconveniences you for a little bit. What you're going to get fat. What, you, let me let me tell you something. You weren't that beautiful to begin with. It ain't hurting you. You well, know, like it just just be what it is. You know, I'm not saying the situation right. Just be me and smart aleck, like, obviously. What I'm getting at, there's people out there that are in the opposite situation that can have babies, that can't have, you know, children of their own that would love to have that child and raise it as their own. And and that's the craziest part about all this is that out of almost every 300 abortions that are done, one child is recommended for adoption. So at the end of the day, that, that shows you how crazy this nonsense is, mm-hmm. is that out of 300 abortions, we can only convince one woman to, to keep the child and, and let that child be raised by a loving family yeah. who, who wants, well, let desperately me, wants your child. Let me be the devil's advocate in this one. I hate to say that because there is a flip side of this is then you start dealing with the, the other side of it, which is. You know, you're talking about doctors doing this per prof, per prof, for profit. We get tongue tied there, and the money they make on it. Well, unfortunately, state agencies, a lot of agencies, and the adoption process is the same way. They're not cheap, and so there's a lot of people. Maybe I'd say middle class. I'm not gonna say you know some poor person off the road is like, oh, I want a kid. You know, um, a middle class person can't afford these. Uh, you know, adoptions. Um, so, so it is kind of, I don't say counterintuitive, but it's almost, I, I want to be fair. I know I'm kind of speaking double tongued here because I would say to do that, um, instead of spending the thousands of dollars to these, um, abortion clinics that we're funding is we need to invest that money, um, to parents, um, to not be foster parents, but to be adoptive parents to take that kid in. It put the money there instead because that's that's the that's the problem. It's not so you can't claim on your taxes, you can't get a tax return, you can't raise them, you can you can buy the diapers or formula, you know all that stuff. That's that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the upfront price of just going through this process. And everybody said, well, it's 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 cheap, it's free, it's this and that. No, it's not. And the, and the flip side of it is too is Department of Human Services. I can't speak for every state. I can't, but I can speak for here. They have more kids than what they have families that'll take them in. Like nobody does that anymore. You want to know why? Is because, like I've said, it's it's pretty cr- crystal clear in the Bible. Take care of widows and orphans. Um, there's some definitions there for widows and criteria and stuff like that. It's there. Um, but widows is, are, are you know orphans is pretty self-explanatory. You know, and if if you needed a biblical explanation of that, I'm going to give you one that's not in the Bible, but I'm going to tell you what that biblical explanation is. They're not legal adults, and they don't have parents. They're orphans. I'm, that's and you know why? Yeah. Because there's scripture. We go back to the laws of the land, and the law of land is you until they're 18 or emancipated. I guess if a kid at a certain age can be emancipated, fine, but that's not a a norm. Again. Yeah. Um, so, bad things. so we should be taking care of these kids. Yet again, if we did this as Christian, you can call it brain, what you call it, you if we raised, if we acted like Christians as what we say we are as society, and we actually acted like it, and we took these kids in, we would change the generations, you know, coming up in, in these kids and, and give them a life, um, give them worth something living for. So again, I'm saying, you know, the, the, even the systems, foster care systems are overran. There's a lot of problems there. The screening is probably not as good as it should be. Um, in some places, I mean, I think that's a gamble you take with anything, you know, but. Well, uh, first and foremost, I, I do want to push back a little bit because here's how I ultimately view it. Uh, no doubt in my mind that the adoption process is extremely expensive um, and it, it's a very long process at that. Yeah. First of all, I want to point out uh, that's why a guy like President Donald Trump would come up with a solution of, hey, we need to start making insurance companies pay for IVF treatments for mm-hmm. marriages. Now, should there be stipulations on that? Yes. I think you should be married for a minimum of three to five years before you're eligible for IVF treatment just to make sure that you know you aren't some brand newlywed couple you have this child, and then six months later, you get a divorce, yeah. and now this child's br- growing up in another in broken vitro, home. In vitro is what you're talking yes. about? Yes. Um, so I, mm. I'm totally on board for that. Now, with that being said, uh, where I want to push back on 
is are you really trying to tell me that if you've never had a child and a doctor comes to you and says, uh, Joseph, if you pay $10,000, we can insert these eggs into your wife, uh, fertilized eggs, so that way you can have a child. Tell me right now, would you do everything in your power to come up with that $10,000 to have that child? Actually, it's closer to fifteen because I've been in that situation. <laughs> um, and, and the thing of it is, I, and I'll be fair to that because this is a, a valid, some degree, argument and in, in where I stand on things is I was kind of in that situation. However, I already had children. We, we, we love kids. My wife and I love kids. That's why we have five of them um, and fostered kids throughout the years. Um, my pullout game wasn't strong. Um, it is what it is. <laughs> you know, there's a joke. <laughs> but, you know, no, we love kids. And, you know, that's why we fostered kids and, and made a difference, tried to make a difference when we could in kids. And some were a challenge. And some were just, they just needed love and cared for. And, and some of them needed discipline. So there's, everyone's different. But we was faced with that situation. And it was about 15 grand. Um, the answer is, yeah, I would do that in a heartbeat because I would have done it on lesser terms, essentially. Um, the problem that, you know, again, we get into biblical stuff and how God works through things, stuff like that. We were going to go through with it. We, you know, w- was having difficulties. And so we were candidates, I guess, per se. Um, and your mom and I, we struggled because the the issue we had was they're going to put, you know, five or six babies. What, what if they I all know, take? I know. Yeah. And that's, we were, and, 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 you know, that's a gamble. Yeah. My wife and I, we were just like, which, okay, you got six. Which one do you decide to terminate? It's still, an, I know people or, People are going to like, Joe, don't. that's far-fetched. This is my stance on it. To me, that's it an happens. abortion. It happens. That is a living cell. You know, of course, it's not a baby, but we, I really couldn't make that decision. You know, we struggled about that. And, you know, it was like, God, we want to have kids, you know, blah, blah, whatever. And we really struggled with that. And so we were just like kind of not putting it off per se, but like we were wrestling with this. So we're praying about it. And. She she had some issues, so she goes to the doctor, and long story short, I could get elaborate on what these things are, but like, oh, you're pregnant. We're like, yeah, right, whatever. You know, like, we kind of laughed it <laughs> off. We're like, they're like, no, you're serious. Like, they're like, yeah, you're pregnant. We're just like, you know, so to me, that was the best Christian example I can give in that situation of God's intervention. You know, all medical things were there. They were in our favor, but we wrestled with an internal decision to say, you know what, we can't, we can't decide which one of those we let live or die. And so God intervened and we, you know, conceived a child of our own. Um, and we didn't have to make that tough decision because I don't know that I could have made it. And so I kind of take that back to what I said, you know, a lot of these things just, you know, because it's a mistake, you know, or what would appear to be a mistake in the eyes of God, that's it may be that mistake, but we're talking about God here. You can work through those things. And and you you know, you look at all the people in the Bible, you know, that it, they these people were all you not know, mistakes, I guess, like sex wise and like, oops, that shouldn't have happened. <laughs> but I'm saying like, look at these people that God used in the Bible, um, and used them for great things. I mean, these were the 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 foundation, you know. And they were all in their own way messed up, you know, adulterers and and cheaters and you know kill you know whatever and you know killing you know, or martyring people, you know, like all these things. And, and God uses them in such a great way. And so we again, I'm going with the Christian perspective on this, but we look at it in 2024. We're at it's like God's not capable of that anymore, you know, like He doesn't use people like that anymore. Um, however, I believe that. You know, God's the same yesterday as, you know, as he was then and today, the same. Because you know what? That's what the Bible says. And so if God did that then, why would he not do that now? And he does do that now. You know, but we, we tie the hands of God and just running around killing people and killing little kids thinking we know better. Well, look, I mean, there, there's not a, a whole lot more really to be said other than uh, I, I do just want to make it be known that if you are the type of person who supports abortions, uh, then I think I'm also well within my rights to call you racist. And I, I feel 100% confident in being able to do that because if you look at what babies are killed more than any others, it's blacks and minorities. So typically the same people that want to try and make the argument of, hey, defund the police, you know, black lives matter, uh, you know, there's racial injustice in America, this and that, are the same ones that also support 
black women lining up a Planned Parenthood and killing off future generations of black people more yeah. than any other race. Yeah. But I'm racist. Just for telling I mean, you I that all people saying. are created I mean, equal in the eyes of God. Yeah. That's well, the point. Yeah, no, I mean, I see what you're saying. I mean, you're kind of not, it's not really stretched to get there. I do see what you're saying because I, I do know the statistics on it, man. You're right, you know, in that aspect um, of different races and, being and predominantly as a, as a executed side note, over the other. Look at the origin of Planned Parenthood. Do you know who founded it? Uh, it was yeah. a woman, number one. And guess what? She was racist. And her plan was to kill, I, I think in her words, the Negro population through abortions. Guess how we're going to get rid of the black people? Have them abort their kids. So in, in translating that, what you're saying is we should let Hitler come to America and control the Jewish population. Definitely not. <laughs> no, but that's trans. But that's I'm kind of not saying that. <laughs> I understand that, and I had probably best you don't. But in an analogy, <laughs> hopefully people understand an analogy is it kind of not the same thing. I mean, it, it, I know that's a stretch, but yeah. you know, you're letting, you know, I I don't know if it's race driven that what she's saying. White women and well, it, the race the, the, the race card's kind of hard for me to kind of get around. I, mean, I do understand what you're saying, like a hundred percent, like. A black you know, people. like a black person did this and like you're doing you're against your own. Like, yeah, no surprise there. <laughs> you know, like this is like this is proven, you yeah. know, like this is this is not a new concept. Um, but to discredit it based off, oh, a woman did it. There we go. There's a problem. You know, like maybe it is. But, you know, like and because she was black you know, on top of that, mm-hmm. that it's, it's mm-hmm. a, you know, like I do. She probably didn't have a here's the craziest part. Uh, that that black woman probably didn't even have an ID to get that abortion. Well, I, I don't know. And the only reason why I can say that is because <laughs> I know they don't have IDs to vote. Otherwise, we'd have voter registration laws in America. We do. We don't. We have voter registration. Because it's these, racist. Uh, these elections have, have never been ID, rigged okay? in America. <laughs> you know, that's that's a Democrat pop- propaganda. I hope you understand the, the elections aren't rigged. No, not at all. They're 100% um, real. I mean... And, th- you know, Donald Trump was a freaking fool I, for even saying that. He never should have said it. You know, like, I'm he's glad totally you said wrong. It. You know, like... <laughs> yeah, I was going In to. case you all don't realize, that's full of crap. The elections yeah. were messed up. Yeah. They were altered with. It's been proven, but we don't want to talk about that, you uh-huh. know, because that's that doesn't fit their agenda. You know, I still think the same thing, you know... And by let's, let's, and keep by the way, let's keep it on topic. That's no, what we're talking about. And, and yeah, to, to stay on topic... Uh, you know, I don't know. You didn't watch the presidential debate. Shame on you. Even though you did make a good point, uh, because ninety percent of America, I feel like, is in your boat, and that is, why watch the debates whenever I already know who I'm voting for, and I'm not going to change my mind. Yeah. Uh, you know, mm. it, is it kind of crazy to say that in some ways? Kinda. But on the other hand, I completely understand because, like, why waste my time, an hour and a half of my life, watching these two people bicker back and forth when I already know I'm voting red or blue? Yeah, m- that my, does make mine sense. is not so cut and dry. I mean, because I think there's a lot of people that have that mentality. That's like, I don't care. I'm I'm voting for the Democrat because I'm a Democrat Vote or Republican. Blue, no matter who, you know, like that's not. That's not my mentality on that. So my mentality is this, you know, like Donald Trump is the only one that was voted for to be to run for president. Sorry, people, but your Kamala Harris was not voted on by the people to run as a candidate for presidency. She wasn't. You, The Democrats, you little sheeple, I'll say it again because I've already said this. You can go back a couple episodes. You all were told who you're going to vote for. And you will vote for that Democrat if you're if you're a true Democrat, you're going to vote for. Her. You didn't even have a choice in. Y'all are ignorant because y'all are just like, yeah, yes, Amasa, I'll do that. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, yeah. There's the race thing again yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you can reference that. But that's yeah. what y'all are doing. Look, I'm y'all sorry. are playing that you are slaves to the government, if and that's why you know. Let me let me clarify because there are people going to get bent on that one. I already know it, and and the quote was directly in there on purpose, you know, because that's what you're doing. You're being a slave to the system. And y'all are just doing exactly what you're told. And y'all are just like, and you just sit there just like everything's going to play out okay. I don't care what you think about the, the Kamala Harris. And I like to say it about Trump, too. They're not in your best interest. But the thing of it is, I have a choice to make. 
and I am not voting for that woman on any way, shape, or form. And it's not because she's a woman. It's not because she's black or confused of her identity. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact is she already has policies in place that have failed. She does. She I haven't heard of a single failed, policy. All I know because they're trying to paint. <laughs> they're trying to what they're doing is they're trying to pass this off onto something else. And somebody else to take the fall for it. She's had several policies that fails, and I am not going to just say yes, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, and do what I'm told. I'm not being a slave to the system. So the only logical one left is Trump. Now, is does he have policies that are whatever? I would be more apt to say this. And it's not because I'm a Trump fan. Is he's had policies that haven't had a chance to prosper, and I'll even go to the border walls for just that. You know, we can sit there and say, oh, he should never happen. That should never happen. Once they came in, they're like, we're scratching that right off the bat because we don't like it. So millions and billions of dollars are wasted on it. But then what happens is these policies started failing under Biden administration and other states started stepping up and said, screw that. We're doing it anyway. And then they started shutting down their own borders, Texas being one of them, which is a big deal with Border Patrol or, yeah, and all that stuff. It, it, the reason it, it, we know that it needs to happen. You want to stop the drug trafficking, the sex trafficking, well, stop it, but limit it or put a dent in it. These things have to happen whether you like it or not. And the thing of it is, the, the free and, and everybody can come here and we're supposed to be a, a safe haven and all this other stuff, find another country because we're to the place now where we can't afford it. We cannot keep affording to, to play the ignorance of our government. So I'm long-winded to get there, but that's what this woman is standing for. It's just like, hey, come to the United States, free for all. We need your vote, so come here. You don't have to have your you don't have to have a driver's license to vote for me. And so we get them here and we vote. We put this woman in, and our country continues to keep crumbling under under our feet like it is because the reference I just made. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. We just do it because we're a Democrat. We're told to. Yes, yes, we will. You see, that's. Yeah, I know. People's going to say, oh, that's a racist remark. Yes, I understand how it can look. Listen to the context before you start freaking, you know, whatever. And that's what the Democratic Party has done is you're just a follower. You just do what you're told. And that's exactly the way our government wants this. That's why the, the homosexuality, the race, this issue, this issue is just on the same playing field as the ones I just mentioned. It's causing division. That's what they want. Well, I mean, first of all, uh, in my opinion, you've got to give credit to the Democrat Party for being able to go from bashing this woman and basically talking about how incompetent and how she actually drags down Biden's presidency to now flipping the script and making it competitive against Donald Trump. Um, and at the end of the day, that does take skill. Make no mistake about it. That That's not easy to do to make a – and I'm not going to say she's an idiot because at the end of the day – uh, she was a lawyer, and so do I think she has book smarts in, in some capacity? For sure. Now, does she know how to apply that is a completely different story, and I, I'm, I'm really not here to speak on that. But what I will say is that over half of the black voting population in America, that voting block right there, is so uneducated that they have no idea who the Democrat Party really is. Go ahead and look it up. Who started the KKK? Do you think it was Republicans or Democrats? Well, I, I, I don't know because I don't get involved. It was the in Democrats. Democrats. Like, and people even Who just started that the comment. Civil War? Was it the Republicans or the Democrats? Democrats. It was the Democrats. And you know why? Because they wanted to keep slavery. Mm. And this mm. is the party that you're supporting well, and that's but, going to save But they democracy. are keeping it. They, they're keeping it right now. They're keep, That's I, how dumb you know, like, half of black people are that vote every four years continuously vote blue no matter who you're voting for the very party that wanted to keep you enslaved the very party that wants to kill your children that's how dumb you are well they're keeping you, them enslaved and you right refuse now refuse to see the truth it, they're keeping them enslaved right now i mean I, I i again i'm going back to the reference i just made like i'm not i'm not even trying to it just it keeps so fitting to every little <laughs> thing yeah i understand it's a race it, people's going to take that as a racist uh a slur it's not is because that's what you're doing and i don't care what yeah. race you are if you're white you're black you're green if you're a leprechaun you're asian you're indian let's cover them all you're all falling into that category you're just doing what you're told you're supporting the party of you the know KKK. it's like and, and, it's and not i don't get it even if you cut out the kkk and you cut out you know all these other things look at no, i, they I like said this the KKK. look at the slavery today i've said it and it's proven it is worse today than what it ever has been 
And that's true. It is facts. It's true. Yeah. Your and we're, and they're doing less. nothing about it to say, oh, we, we do this. Hours. You know, you're not doing. No, I'm not talking about that. I know. I'm just, I'm, I'm you know, like, that but I they do don't want to deal with the borders. <laughs> and, and, and I'm circumventing back to this because the board, you know why? Because guess who policy failed at the borders? Your Democratic A vice party. president. Yeah. Kamala Harris, no, it's failed. She was in charge of that policy, and she failed. Now, if you look at the media, she's going to pass that book off to somebody else, and somebody else is going to take the fall for it. No, she was the one that was over that stuff, and it has failed. Your little kids are getting trafficked, sexually abused, and slavery. Yes, the word slave, as in beat you and make you work. Yeah. Yes, that type of slavery is happening today, people. Because of partly because of your vice president that you want to vote in. Now, again, I am not going to sit here and say Donald Trump, he, man, he's the perfect person. He's the perfect candidate. He's the, he's got to be the, I don't know. All I'm saying is I ain't voting for the other one. Right, and that's what I've got left. Now, we rewind the hands of time and then take your turn. You look what happened whenever Trump and it was Hillary. That's my same opinion. It was like, which one do you pick? The lesser of two evils. And that's where we're at. And I, I'm I'm not disagreeing, and I think we should kind of fall back into the abortion topic. But the last thing I would say, especially about the immigration slash uh, child sex trafficking or just human trafficking in general, uh, there's a the real issue here is uh, I don't believe Donald Trump whenever he says he's going to deport them all. That's impossible. I, I would love to know how the federal government, even with the National Guard's help, can remove 20 million illegal immigrants in this country within four years. That's number one. But then the, there's the real reality, which is what we're faced with now, is do we give them citizenship or not? Because if you don't give them citizenship, then what you're subjecting them to is uh, 10, 12-year-old, 13-year-old kids who are working at meatpacking facilities illegally, making pennies on the dollar uh, because these major corporations can get cheap labor out of them. Well, uh, let's, let's look at it. Or you give them citizenship... And now you're increasing the welfare state because, unfortunately, uh, a lot of these people are giving tons of government assistance and to expect anyone to get up off their butt and go to work whenever you're paying everything for them is right. stupid. And, and then guess who they're going to vote for? The party that's providing all right. that welfare for you. Well, from, from a standpoint of what we're talking about, then why can't you just go kill them all? Because we care more about Im illegal immigrants than we do our own children. Uh, no, I mean, we're talking about abortion. That was the whole thing. We kind of went off in this tangent of, you know, politics, and that's fine. You know, we're never dictate where we're going to go with things because they all do tie. But, you know, how do we get them all out? Well, let's save our let's let's worry about our own people before we start worrying about everybody else's. And I agree, but and, it, it's just I'm being realistic. That's all I'm getting at. It's just unrealistic to expect any government in the world to be able to root out. 20 million people who crossed your border illegally and you have no idea where they're at. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I think you can, I think what you would weed out is the people that's trying to do things right. The people that's coming over here like, hey, I have a visa to work. They're not, they're not U.S. citizens. They're working on a visa. You're, you're going to weed out those people. Yeah. Yeah. But the people that you're right, that's coming here. Criminals. Like, like the, it's, they're hiding. It's <laughs> estimated that there's, you know, we'll say two thousand. There's two thousand illegal people in America, which we know it's millions. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. How do you how do you even know that? Like, they're they're, they're illegal. You don't know yeah. that they're here. You yeah. know, like allegedly. You know, yeah. Because, <laughs> but that's uh, so that's the thing. Like, yeah. yeah, you're right. You can't get them all out. Now, can they put a dent in it? Yeah. It, and but I the hope thing of it is, it's twofold. Even if you take the the two two thousand, what I said, you know, which we know there's millions here. We're talking about big numbers. You know, big 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 numbers. <laughs> yeah. Huge. <laughs> Huge numbers. <laughs> so, if you take that and you and you get them all out, that's fine. Great. We can clean up the streets. We can clean up the trash. Is what they're going to say. You know, like make America great again. Well, that's only going to be temporary because you still have a border problem. You know, like there's going to come back, and this is proven. They already do. They do that. They deport. We deport people right now. Despite what people think, they do deport people, and they they come back and they come back again. And you got coyotes. Bring, you know, you get the whole nine yards. You go go on that in another episode, but like. So you've got to have a bigger plan in mind. It's like, okay, you, you can root out some of these people and get them back, get them out of the country, but how do you prevent them from coming back? You know, and that's what, you know, we go back into that is build a wall. You know, like, I think that building a wall is, you know, stupid to some degree, but like, well, 
it what works. are what are we doing? Like, what else are y'all doing? You like, and uh, like, go, if go it were me, least. like, build a wall, I'd put that thing like twenty feet in the ground and be like Jurassic Park, man. Like, you touch it, you're you're basically you're, you're gonna die. Like, you're getting electrocuted. Like, you know, like, and I know we we can't do that. People, people humane, don't want to like, say that that walls aren't effective, but I, I would just say go look at the Middle East. Uh, you know, why is it that Gazans aren't able to get into Egypt? And and it's because of how good their walls are. You know, because look at the end of the day. If you don't have walls, you have no security. You're not a country. Now, well, this, uh, this country's just messed up, man. I mean, I you look really, at the policies; it's it's just screwed up. There's no I, way around this. What I would say is, and the, the saddest part about all of this, um, white Americans specifically in America, that if you really want to see change, uh, I, I think it might happen this election cycle, because. The Democrat Party really messed up whenever they got on that presidential debate and denied that illegal immigrants were eating people's pets. <laughs> because here's my, how much are I know about Are we shifting off abortion now, or what people. are we doing? Like, no, no, I, just, I have to make this point, and that <laughs> is uh, white people don't care about racism. Uh, they don't care about any kind of inequalities. They don't care about how bad the economy is. But the moment you touch that chihuahua, or that little kitty cat, you better believe all hell is going to break loose. And so if there was ever one topic in America that could unite all of white people, it's illegal immigrants eating their pets. And so if Donald (coughs) Trump was smart, he would continue to lean in on protect our pets (laughs) <laughs> because if he did that, you know how many white liberal women he could convince to join the other side? Because mm-hmm. one side's telling you that this cat that's head was chopped off and you saw uh, your Haitian neighbors barbecuing it in their backyard. That didn't happen. Yeah. So the that's One party's telling you that versus the man who's like, hey, if I'm elected, we're protecting your pets. Yeah. Kill our kids, but not our kitties. Who's kidding you? <laughs> 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 Well, that's what, uh, that's what no, you're that saying. Is, that I is mean, exactly like, what, they, they really don't care about the kids. But <laughs> no, it's like the kitties. Yeah, that matters. Yep. Uh, yeah, you know, and look, I, I know we could beat a dead horse with this. Uh, no, you can't. Dead kids. You could eat it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in some states. Uh, but the the point of it being here, guys, is that you know, just kind of recap it one more time. Uh, there are three main reasons that women should not be getting abortions, and that's number one. The Planned Parenthood industry itself is reselling the fetal tissue that comes out of your womb. Now, whether it's for a loss or not does not matter. Your child has become a commodity for research and vaccines. Number two, at the end of the day, you are racist by killing more black kids every year than any other population. And the fact that you support a group that is carrying out this terrible mission. And then lastly and most importantly, it is satanic. Okay, there's no way around it. Whenever you say my body, my choice, it is the most selfish thing anybody could ever say versus the words of Jesus Christ, which is I'm giving my life for you. Oh, I thought you were going to say do not murder. <sighs> I mean, he did I say that, that too. I think that was in there too. But, you know, today we can take the Bible and twist it and turn it whatever we want and make it, you know, that's what we do, right? So, at the end of the day, people, um, having a abortion out of convenience is not okay. Uh, just because you choose to be a hoe and sleep around, or even, guess what, maybe you're not a hoe. Maybe that, that was your first sexual encounter in one year, but you weren't married to the guy and you just met him. That's still your fault. And there's consequences for your actions good or bad and so the point of it being here you are required to make the right decision as an individual you should always be mindful of that it's not easy guess what 99 percent of my life has been extremely difficult and i've avoided trying to do the right thing but the few times that i have number one my life's a lot better for it but number two you feel good about it and i'm sorry Ask any mother out there who decided to keep their child, who looks back at them whenever they're 10 years old, that regrets having that child. Unless, in 2024, that child is flashed on the front screen of our TVs because they decided they really hated Susie at school and they were bullied. 
and, and well, now I mean, it goes in, it, they're there's a lot of releasing factors, that. You know, I mean, that's the point. If you teach sex ed in class, I mean, like, you know, my kids watch it. They're like, why don't they show them how they do abortions too? Let them make the choice. You know, like you can not, shove you not can shove depictions. You show can, real. Yeah, I mean, abortions. you can show a woman having. I mean, this stuff is in the school systems and some, but like, oh, we can show here. Here's a banana. Here's a condom. Here's how you use it. Like, like. I didn't know you had to be taught that, but we'll just, they do. <laughs> I mean, as if it's not on the page. Yeah. And then, like, oh, well, here's birth control. Here's this, you know, well, how come you're not showing all the alternatives? Let's, let's, let's talk about abortions in school and show them, okay, if you get pregnant, hey, this is, might be a decision you have to make. So if you have to make it, here's what you're up against. Yeah. Here's what and this show, looks like, like. Yeah. Like, and don't just show them uh, yeah. a one week into it. I mean, they teach wait, them everything. Give, yeah. Give let them, them, no, let's, let's them go in there the and, the and let's trimester. talk about what it is. Let's let's talk about going in there and going up through the vaginal area or other areas of the woman's body and taking a baby that has arms and legs and a head and cutting them off with basically a pair of scissors and then vacuuming and, them and out. then and then yeah and then cutting the spine in half and then sucking them out through a vacuum clean, a vacuum that in scent and again takes them out in pieces or either that or grinds them up into pieces so they can be disposed of let's talk about that in the public school system disposed of let's they sell it <laughs> well, in some systems, let's talk about that in the public school system. Let's show these kids exactly the decisions and what they have to be accountable for. Because we want to do that with everything else. We want to teach our kids, hey, go ahead and cut your penis off. That's okay. You can, you can have titties. You want to be a girl today? That's fine. You want to be a kitty cat? Go ahead. Piss in the litter box. Use whatever bathroom you want. Let's teach our kids. Let's go ahead, society. Let's teach our kids the reality, the society, the things that's real in this world. Let's go ahead and teach them in the public school system. It'll never happen. And, and here's what I would because say. Because that ultimately. truth is too hard. When people have to face it, they don't want to face the reality of the decision they made. And, and the thing of it is, and we, I know we're kind of wrapping up, get on the back end of this, but there's also a statistic that we haven't talked about. When women have, have abortions, there is an overwhelming amount that have depression issues and, and mental issues as a side effect from that. But we don't want to talk about that either. Well, and... Just to, to add to your point, I would say that if you're going to show children abortions and what they look like in high school in the same way that you would teach uh, sex ed or drag queen story hour or teaching them that they were born in the wrong body, I would say you need to show them the most extreme form of what an abortion looks like, which is one in the ninth month. Oh, I agree. The third trimester. I agree. Let them see what a full-grown baby looks like inside of the womb and what the process looks like as they extract a living human being. Yeah, I mean, you, you'd have to, at some point, somebody, you know, it's, it's gruesome because it just pisses me off even just thinking about it and, and even discussing it. It just disgusts me that, you know, so, yeah, I, you know, as much as I'd hate to say it, put it out there. You know, parents have a, you have a choice, you know, you, you know, here's the excuse you use it with everything else. Well, you have a choice, you know, the kids just don't have to watch it. We'll vote your kid out of it then, you know, like. But what I'm getting, it's it's never going to happen, man, because yeah. you have to face this reality, and they don't want to face the the consequences of their decisions, and and the the horrific things that goes on, it, it, you know, the right word, horrible. I don't want to say horrific, I don't know if it's the right word or not, but horrible things that go on there, um, behind closed doors, and that's why these things aren't really publicized, and why why you have these secret videos and and, and undercover obtained. stuff and stuff like that yeah because like a whistleblower <laughs> you know yeah um, illegally obtained is so much because different than false you know we know it's out there but we don't want to we don't want to talk about it and see that's the thing you know i know I, people can take some things racially and things i've said they can take it mean we've called people satanic we, you know it's my opinion but the thing of it is and this you can't run from you cannot run from this out of everything we've said you can twist it turn it do what you want this you can't run from we don't face this in society because it is a very ugly subject, and it's one that, like we said within schools, it's very sick. And and even think about that, that any normal person, you know, would just it, it would just be disgusting. And to have to watch, uh, to watch that, um, would be a whole different thing. And and so we don't face these things in society. We just keep well. It's better just to say it's, it's my body, my choice. Just let them have it. Let them do it. Because we do what it is. Just like out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. Yep. And just let it happen. And 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 then the thing of it is, it's like LGBTQ. It's racial issues. It's like oh, it's a social media bandwagon. Let's get on it. Same thing with gun reform. And, you know, and so many other issues. You don't really understand that choice until you're put in a position to make it. Um, people want to sit here and and. 
y'all can get bent for all I care with it. I don't care because I've said it before. If you don't like the show, find somebody else to tickle your ears and watch that too. Because I don't care. Um, my thing with it is, is you don't understand until you're put in that position. I've been in that position to some fashion, um, and you know the right decision, in my opinion, was made to to have the child. Um, it was a very big inconvenience. It would have caused a lot of problems in both people's lives. Um, but the decision was made to have the kid, um, that kid being my grandchild. And so I, I respect the mom and dad there. Obviously, as you say with you in front of me, the other woman, not so much. Um, I don't really care for her. I'll say that publicly. If anybody knows that situation, <laughs> um, they know it. And I'm not saying that to cast, um, guilt or anything against that young lady um and very few things that i could say respectful about her but i do respect her for that um i really do um it was a very tough decision for a young lady to make and she made the right decision and and i can i can respect that and uh yes it's my granddaughter yes i get all that those things are so easy to say if you understood the situation you, <laughs> you would probably think well you would know that i would probably have some differing opinions on that so I, I've been in those situations, and, I, and I'm only saying that not to talk about anybody, not to talk to you, to talk for her or, or my granddaughter in particular. I'm saying that is because you don't know until you're put in that situation. And in that situation, you have to, again, you're called on the carpet to start making some moral and ethical decisions. Um, you're going to be tested to your faith. You're going to have to actually start standing up for something other than just sitting there and putting your name on a ballot and letting people make the decisions for you. Um, so, and that's what we need to do in society in this, yes, it goes to race. It goes to this LGBTQ. It goes to our borders. It goes to who, who's elected as president and politics, um, our school systems, stuff is being taught to our kids. It requires us to start stepping up to the plate and making some good moral and ethical decisions. If you do not believe Christianity, exclude it, exclude it. I'm going to tell you right now, exclude it. Do is what is morally and ethically right. And you would see a big change in society. You would change, uh, see a change in depression issues. You would see a change in uh, suicide. You'd see a change in school shootings, um, political. Um, you would see, you'd start seeing some good citizens. You'd, you'd see, start seeing people that cared about each other and helped each other instead of tearing each other down at the government's um, convenience because they want to interject and, and cause division within people. So, Enough about a life of Joe and Devin today, but there you go. That's it in a nutshell. Yeah, you know, it, it's just, it's wild times. Um, you know, I, I don't claim to know it all, but at the end of the day, I, I feel very confident uh, in being able to stand on the values of all human lives are worthy uh, and deserve a, a chance at, at life. Uh, and it, it's no one's choice to take that from them. Um, uh, so, you know, with that being said, I, I just hope that people will, uh, take some of these arguments seriously, you know, and, and last but not least, uh, just because someone tells you it's not happening doesn't mean it's not happening. And I would look no further than, you know, I'm sure in Germany during World War II, they were probably asked, Hey, where are all the Jews at? Are you killing them? And they probably said, no, that's not happening. We're definitely not doing that. But now we go back and look at history, right. and clearly that's exactly what was happening. So just because you have a, a talking head uh, that's moderating a debate and telling you that, no, there aren't any uh, states that allow children to be terminated after the pregnancy, um, that does not mean that that is true. Right. And so do your own research. Really look into these things. Look into what these bills are talking about uh, and how they want to pass this and what terminology they want to use. Because just so you're aware, into the ninth month, up until the due date, there are very many people out there who are advocating for bills and laws to terminate the pregnancy. And so at the end of the day, that's killing children. So just think long, think critically about it. Uh, don't let your emotions get too much involved in uh, in the process and just be really logical about it. And at the end of the day, if you do that, you would say, this is wrong and needs to be stopped. Especially given the fact that I gave you three solid points. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of women that agree with us uh, because we live in that kind of environment. 
Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the please drop a comment. Let us know what you think. Um, you know, if you have topic ideas, I'd love to hear it. But you got to share this. Let other people know because there's a lot of people that do struggle with these kinds of topics, and sometimes they need to hear um, firm opinions one way or another about why they should make a, a good or bad decision. So with that being said, thank you all. Have a great night.